Hello and welcome to today's video on high altitude investing. Today is going to be me going over the Poloniex interface and explaining a few things and how it works. Uh, shout out to Ghost in the Machine for the comment on my last video for the idea for this one. And let's get right into it. Oh, and another thing is you can, you know, get a hold of me through my Twitter or Marshalls and the email and the website. So, and the tip jar is right there if you want to donate, if you like what I'm doing. But yeah, let's get right into this. So first I'm going to show you some, some stuff that I've drew up in my software here. So let me switch over to my software. Okay. Um, let's make sure that's working real quick. Yep. Okay, cool. So this is just a screenshot of the Poloniex Exchange. So you can see this is what the normal Poloniex Exchange looks like. If you're, um, if you're new to this channel or, you know, if you're new to Poloniex, this is what it looks like. Uh, you can sign in or create an account up here in the top right if you're interested in setting up one. Um, I recommend it. It's my personal favorite exchange. Um, there's lots of different ones, but this is the one that I like to use. So, some, you know, I'm the most familiar with this one. So, you know, there's a lot of things going on, though. Uh, as you can see, it looks kind of complicated. It might be a little overwhelming at the start. That's okay. It's uh, very understanding. When I first got into this, I had next to zero knowledge of stock trading or anything like that. So I didn't even understand exactly how candlesticks worked or anything like that. And by the way, I'm making a video on candlesticks for you guys soon. And I'm also going to make a video on limit orders. So that's what this box right here is. This is the limit order box, as you can see. But um, first thing I want to point out is right up here in the top right, uh, top left, excuse me, corner, you have the pair. This is a market pair. So that means uh, this is the Ethereum exchange market. I got to this by coming over here on the right under markets, under Bitcoin, and clicked Ethereum or ETH. And that's how it brought up this, this chart here. This is the price history. This is where the price has moved in the past. And that goes um, on a time scale, as you can see, from October 18th on to February 7th. So that's how the price has moved since October 18th to February 7th, which, as you can see, it moved from about the 0 0.019 area down to the low of around 0 0.008 ish is um i don't have the exact chart pulled up right now otherwise i could show you what the exact number is i'll do that real quick here on xmr so that you guys understand how to look for price so as you can see this um horizontal and vertical crosshair on the screen that's snapping in between each candlestick if you move up and down that's what the price is the price is displayed in a vertical move so um, the, the peak of this chart right here, this is XMR, is 0 0.012 Bitcoin and 0 0.011 is the bottom. So that's how the price has moved in XMR in the last four days and four hour candlesticks. So each candlestick is the duration of four hours. And duration is, is shown in width, like I said, the time from February 4th, this is zoomed in a little bit more than the other chart, so it's less time. But from February 4th to February 7th, is this is the price that Monero, the price movement Monero has been making in between that time. So let's get back to this. Um, so the reason the price is in Bitcoin is because the pair is in Bitcoin, right? So if you want to buy an ETH token, it's going to cost you 0 0.0109 uh, Bitcoin at today's exchange rates. And today is the um, 7th of February of 2017. Now, this, this right here is volume. Um, it is displayed in the background is these gray bars. And you can, you can see what volume happened then the volume is the same size as the candlesticks too. 
um, they're correlated. You can see the volume by going over with your crosshair and up in the top here, in the top right of the chart pattern, up over here, um, you can see the volume in XMR and the volume in Bitcoin on that candlestick. So this one candlestick here, in four hours, there was 198.96 uh, Bitcoin in volume. And like I said, it's up in the top right here. Gives you the open price, the close price, the high, the low, the um, average price, uh, volume in both the both pairs, the currency pair. So the Bitcoin and the Monero or XMR in this case. Um, this is Monero and XMR are the same thing. XMR is just the three-letter abbreviation of it. All of these coins have little abbreviations. Um, but there's there's a lot of information that can be given. So if you wanted to look what type of volume this this area had right here, you just put your crosshair over it and then up in the top right, this area right here. Um, it's not in this specific screenshot or that one. Um, but as you can see, when I go over a candlestick up there in the top right, it, it shows up these uh, indications, uh, data that it gives you right there. So um, you could you could see how much volume there was in that spike. I'm sure it was quite a bit, considering Ethereum usually averages pretty good volume. <clears throat> um, this is a momentum indicator. It, um, I'm going to have a tutorial on that soon too. So be watching out for that. But it basically just shows the momentum of the market and where it's moving as you can see the market is generally downtrending in these red areas um, see it's been downtrending in correlation to that red area but as you can see there was a little move up right here and that's what caused this little you know place where it smooths out along that and goes back down so this is the momentum was generally downtrending clear until here and then you can see the momentum kind of shifted in the market and that's when the green comes in and then even more so right here you had a sharper shift up in the market so that kind of shows you know what direction the market is going it's a tool that I like to use occasionally um, another thing I would like to point out is the volume in Bitcoin and the volume in Ethereum is stated right here up at the top um, I want to talk about the percent change so the percentage change is in correlation with whatever market pair you have so calculating it to the US dollar or anything like that isn't necessary unless you're trading in the US dollar tether markets so the way that these work I'm just gonna go right into it here is it will tell you the percent change against the US dollar okay so there is a difference in the way these work because if the US dollar is losing value and Bitcoin is gaining value then these charts will go up more you can see that the chart will go up more than it will against Bitcoin so for example if you look at the XMR chart um, you can come here and you can see that on um, what day is this on January 4th it hit a really really high point right here it hit about eighteen dollars per XMR coin and that's a really really good um, peak out right there um, if you're trading this coin you can make a lot of money doing it it was really really cheap in the past under a dollar and even cheaper than that back further but as you can see there's this huge spike right here in in Monero now let's look at it against Bitcoin so this is the same coin, just a different pair. See up here in the top left, XMR to Bitcoin, or the other one was XMR to US dollar tether. That peak isn't nearly as high. Why is that? That's because Bitcoin was gaining just as much, or was gaining more value than the US dollar was. And so there is a difference in price. Um, if you're trading it, it actually doesn't matter. So if you're trading it against the Bitcoin to XMR charts, then it only matters because in that world, right? So you're only, you only care about the current pair that you're trading in. 
Um, see, this coin has a 3.8% move down today. Um, I'm kind of expecting it to, my original idea is that it would catch leverage here, but I kind of expect a short temporary downtrend into this range, probably the 0 0.009, but that's besides the point. The point is, is that the percentage change is in correlation to Bitcoin. So if you're trading against Bitcoin, then your goal should be to either, if you're, if you're trying to hold the Monero and you just want to hold Monero, that's a good trading strategy. I highly recommend holding long. But if you're just trying to, um, if you're just trying to accumulate more Bitcoin, then it, you know, well, either way, it doesn't matter. But if you're trying to accumulate more Bitcoin, then you don't care so much about what it means against the U.S. dollar because you're just trying to build more Bitcoin, and all you care about is what the Bitcoin means against the U.S. dollar. But I hope that explained that for you. Um, I was trying to explain that in the best possible way. But like I said, if you guys ever have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, now, that's probably the best way to, for me to get back to you and reply. Um, so if, if you're you know, looking at the price change, then it's in correlation to whatever market you are. And same with the price too. So let's say we're going to the Ethereum markets here. Um, let's look at, you know, uh, Zcash. It costs you 3.137 Ethereum for one Zcash. Now, if you look at the US dollar tether market, it costs you, let's see, where's Zcash? 35.72 dollars. So it costs you 35 dollars or three Ethereum. And it's kind of funny because right now things are pretty easy to calculate. Bitcoin's at $1,000, so all of its calculations are easy. Um, Ethereum's at just above $10. So it kind of seems to be uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. It seems to be Ethereum is about 10% of what Bitcoin is doing. That's what I'm seeing right now. Looks like it might just be a little bit more than that, you know, at $11, but it seems to be kind of ranging around on average the 10% of Bitcoin. So, which makes sense because the market capitalization, well, it's not 10%, but the market capitalization has been at 10% of Bitcoin in the past. It's up, Bitcoin's up above it right now. But, so let's go right back into the inter interface here. I hope that helped you guys understand um, the way the different markets work. Now, oh, one other thing I wanted to point out in the markets. to Let's say you wanted to buy some Augur inside of the Ethereum market. So our Augur is REP. You have to first have Ethereum to buy REP inside of this market. So you would go to the BTC exchange and you would buy yourself some Ethereum. And then if you wanted to dump it into or buy it, you know, rep in the in the Ethereum market, you would then spend your purchased Ethereum on rep coins, which you could sell back for Ethereum or go to the BTC market and sell back for BTC because rep is also in the BTC markets. Um, and to get US dollar tether, you have to sell your Bitcoin for US dollar tether. And then you can go ahead and buy, for example, or, you know, your XMR, ETC, whatever else. You can sell that for it. And same with these markets. So say you have some ETC or rep already, you can sell that for ETH in these markets. So it's not just one way, it's both ways. But um, uh, so... You know, that's something to keep in mind, too. So that's how you can actually trade the U.S. dollar tether market on Poloniex. Now, let's go ahead and finish these little things that I wanted to point out here in the interface itself. Um, so you have your buy orders right here, which is pretty easy to set up. You just decide how much Bitcoin you would like to spend. You type that in. It will tell you how much Ethereum you can get for that. And then you decide what price you want to pay. You do not have to pay the price that is currently in the Ethereum um, column here, the price column, I mean. You can change it to a lower number. Say you wanted to make it 0 0.009. 
um, then it will just show up in the order book. And if the price ever reaches that, your order will be filled. So you can kind of plan for the future. And same with the sell orders. You could set it for a higher sell point. Say you wanted to sell it at 0 0.02. And if Ethereum ever goes up in value to the 0 0.02 range, you then sell it for that much Ethereum token, um, that much Bitcoin per Ethereum token, 0 0.02 ETH. And it will just stay in the order book until that's filled. Stop limits is kind of a complicated thing, but I, like I said, I'm going to make a video about that in a little bit. Um, probably around a week be expecting the stop limits. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, but it gives you more control over a couple things. So, you know, be watching out for that. Now, another thing is you can adjust your chart indicator settings. So if you want your Fibonacci retracements, which is these orange lines right here in the background, um, it's just a mathematical retracement that traders use in stock trading and all kinds of things. As you can see, they react to those levels. The price likes to react to these, these areas. So it's an important indicator, and you can turn that on or off in here as long as a slow-moving average and some other indicators. And I, I'm going to make a video about indicators also in the future, so be watching out for that. Um, now... Something else here that you should probably pay attention to is your timeline zoom. So you can set this to one month's time, and that will just set your, your little thing here. You can drag it too with your mouse if you'd like. Um, as you can see, you can drag this little area here in between different spots to zoom in. Say there's one little spot I wanted to look at here in the past, or just you know from that little spot on to the future or not the future you can't see the future I wish you could see the future in trading I'd be rich but same with everybody else so um, <laughs> let's see um, yeah so this is this is your timeline and this is your your zoom so that's just a quick way to go between like a month or two weeks time or six hours this is your candlestick duration so that's how much time is in between the wet width portion of this candlestick. So right now I have it set to one day. So each candlestick represents a day's time of price movement. Um, and let's see if there's anything else here. Uh, the troll box. This is the way that you can keep in touch with the community. Um, you have your volume, your price. I already pointed out the market pair that you're trading in your percentage change, um, which I like to, you know, I like to keep an eye on the percentage change, but honestly, it's more important to keep an eye on where you bought in at. So um, if you bought some Bitcoin at $815, you could write that down. Or if you're signed in, there's a little box right here that says my trades right next to this trade history tab. It will say my trades and you can see exactly the trades that you've made on whatever market pair you're looking at in the time. So um, you can see you know, where you bought in or sold out at, but if you bought in at $815, that's more important to take note of buying in at $815 than the percentage change of the day. I mean, I'm not saying it's not important because if a coin makes a 20% move or something like that, then that means that there's a lot of interest in the market uh, one way or the other. You know, if it goes up 20%, there's a lot of people trying to get in. If it goes down 20%, there's a lot of people trying to get out of that market. So, you know, I'm not saying that's not important, but it's, in my opinion, it's more important to be paying attention to your um, buy and sell points because that's what's really going to determine your profit loss in the future. Now, um, like I said, there's this little settings thing here, and there's also, over here, there's also a little settings thing right here. Uh, where is it? <clears throat> I think I may have covered it with this market pair thing here. Let me go. Yeah, here we go. This little settings thing right there is, um, is so that you can adjust the way that this little area 
looks in the mar um in the interface for Poloniex. So like I have mine set so that it shows my BTC value. I'm not signed in in the screenshot, so you can't see it. But normally my Bitcoin value would of each coin that I have would be represented in this column here. So you know you can adjust some settings right there if you click on that little check box, uh, that little settings icon and same with the settings icon right here there's a couple things you can adjust with the troll box um, now let's go over into this other photo I wanted to point out that this one as you can see the market pair is ETC to Ethereum so this is people trading their ETC for Ethereum and vice versa um, and that's where I was talking about the price is going to be in correlation with the market pair so Ethereum and same with the volume so this is 2262 Ethereum in volume not Bitcoin and that's something else you want to be paying attention to because Ethereum is worth a different price than Bitcoin so you have to be taking that into account um, I also wanted to point out the notice box so there's notices here if there's anything in interesting or important happening uh, they will let you know um, there's a Twitter and the Facebook too if you want to follow uh, Poloniex on those media outlets now let's go ahead into one more area of the interface and that's just if you scroll down on the Poloniex tab let me make sure everything is still recording properly here okay cool if you scroll down on the Poloniex uh, interface you can see that there's a market depth in the trade history so I'm gonna go over that really quickly here um, so first of all you have your sum I mean your sell orders so if you make an order and it doesn't fill right off the bat so if you have a different price than what people are asking then it won't fill right off the bat the candlesticks have to move there has to be some price movement for your order to fill so it will just come into this area here which is the you know where all the orders are held where Poloniex keeps that order um, until it's filled and you can see you know the amount of XMR in these orders the amount of Bitcoin in these orders and something I want to point out is there's a difference between the sum Bitcoin and the Bitcoin so as you can see there's one Bitcoin in this first little order at the price of 0.00 or 0.011 and then there's 0.7 Bitcoin in the next column here, row here, you know, whatever this is. <laughs> and um, the sum Bitcoin adds all of those up. So that would be 1.72 and this is 0.7. So it just adds the two of up, you know. So this is just the total amount. But sometimes there can be a bunch of... Um, difference you know like in this price right here there's only two bitcoin point two bitcoin where right here there's an entire two bitcoin so you know different prices have more meaning you know where people want to buy more of it or sell more of it now that's the same with the buy and sell order the buy orders I mean is you're gonna have that that bitcoin and some bitcoin and then also there's gonna be a total amount of bitcoin in or orders that need to be filled right so these are all of the orders that can or need to be filled or will be filled um, depending on where the price moves now here's the total amount of XMR in the in the sell orders and the reason it puts it in XMR is because these are people selling their XMR coins and these are people spending their Bitcoin in the buy order and the sell is the sell XMR so um, you also have to remember that this is swapped so the buy orders are over here on the left these are people buying in and these are people selling out so this is what's called the market depth right here and the market depth is just a visual representation of all of the buy and sell orders now that's why you see what's called a buy wall or a sell wall they call them that's when there's a big line up in a market so a market has this huge line just spike up like this um, that's when there's a move that is significant right so that's when there's more Bitcoin in that area 
of price than the other next to it. So that's the way that that's represented visually. Now there's the trade history. This is the market trade history. So this is anybody trading the, the market at this time will, um, will be shown up in this, in this trade history. If an order is successfully filled, it will be put down here in the trade history. So you can watch that live, you know, see how many people are buying on average or selling on average and what their total Bitcoin is. So that's a good way to see what's happening live in the market with the amount of volume is to be watching that trade history. As you can see, if I come down here on the Bitcoin, we have three buy orders right here. So let's pay attention, wait and see if that changes. Uh, there's a lot of movement in this market, a lot of um, buy and sell orders up in the thing here. As you can see, this has a very unique market depth. Um, Bitcoin has a very, very interesting market depth here on Poloniex. It looks like it's going to fill. So as you can, I mean, it looks like it's going to moon. Excuse me. So as you can see, an order just filled and it was a sell order. I don't know why it's jumping around so much like this. Um, so it was a sell order and the price was at just below uh, $1,050 for a Bitcoin. So somebody sold a little bit of their Bitcoin, only 0 0.0009 for um, at, at the rate of 1,000 and $1,049, excuse me. And they got a total of one, oh wow, they got a total of $1 out of that. So that's how that works. Um, now, Let's see if there was anything else I wanted to go over here. I believe that is everything in the interface for today. If you guys have anything, any questions, you can go ahead. Oh, one other thing. Uh, the, the depth price is, dis, uh, is shown here in a vertical line. So as you can see, the price goes up as people are trying to sell it. Um, here's here's people trying to sell at the 0 0.013 range and here's people trying to sell at the 0 0.023 range so if you make an order at 0.02 in in your price for a sell order then you'll be in this area on the market depth it'll show up in this area on the market depth so you will be added to the visual representation of the market depth you probably won't be able to see it because there's so many other orders but that's what's actually happening now, the depth volume is just uh, shown vertically here. So as you can see, the volume is just steadily increasing. This is the amount of XMR coins in this specific case, since this is the XMR market, that the XMR market pair that people are trying to sell. So there's more and more, there's more XMR coins that people are trying to sell for 0 0.02 Bitcoin than they are for 0 0.01 three Bitcoin and that's to be expected you know people are trying to make money so they're buying it at cheap prices and then setting sell orders at high prices and waiting for the price movement to accommodate for their order and fill it so that they make money off of that and that's basically how profit is made in trading um, one other thing is if you go to poloniex.freshdesk.com you can get support and you can ask questions on here and get help from Poloniex themselves. Um, I've personally never done it, so I don't know exactly how their customer support is, but I wanted to point that out for you guys. Uh, that's everything for today's video. I appreciate your time. I hope this a helped answer some questions for you guys and stay tuned. I'll probably be making a video tomorrow on one of the things that I mentioned in this video, whether it's um, limit orders or something to that effect, I will be releasing a video tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. And as always, stay profitable.